Folks, today I am joined by Alan Richson, who you know from projects such as Reacher and Fast X, and whose new movie, Ordinary Angels, hits theaters on February 22nd. Thank you for your time today, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Alan, I'm not going to have time to talk about this series, but I do just want to say at the top, Blue Mountain State was on when I was in college, and yeah. let me tell you, it was electric. It was an amazing I'm, time to be a kid that age. I'm, gl I'm uh, glad you enjoyed it. Thank but, you. But, uh, Ordinary... Ordinary Angels, first and most importantly, what did your wife think of your stash? She was, uh, she was digging it. I mean, and it's really, it's disheartening because, I mean, really, that just opens up the possibility of a lot of hideous, like, like any dude with t terrible facial hair is like a, like a contender now, and I'm, I'm scared. Um, <laughs> but no, she, uh, she, she was really, she was digging it. I'm just glad that you didn't find yourself in a Henry Cavill type situation where you had to keep the stash for this project, but then yeah. CGI it out of Reacher. That could have been a disaster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a time traveler shows up to your house 20 years ago when your career is first starting and tells you you will be headlining a movie alongside a two-time Academy Award winning actress. What's your reaction? And would you be happy with where your career has gone? Yeah, I probably would have had like chocolate milk and done a spit take, you know, classic. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 you, you cannot plan for these kind of things, and you, you can hope and dream big, um, but I, you know, it, you don't. It's never that specific. Like I'm, I, I'm going to be headlining something with a two-time Oscar winner, and um, and and trying to bring to life this incredible true story. Um, I just, you know, it's 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 all it's all a, a fun, shocking journey for me day to day. Um, but I'm, I'm really proud of where life has taken my career. Um, you know, when you start out, you just have to say yes to everything and hope as you build a resume that it all sort of makes some, some kind of sense. And for most of my career, it was so schizophrenic and disparate that it was hard for people to figure out what to, you know, what to call me in for. I would do a comedy and they'd go like, you know, you're like big, physical, loud, obnoxious, you can't do drama. Do you can't do something small and contained? And I'd go like, oh, for years I would like fight to get in those rooms, and then I would do that and convince people, oh, maybe he can do drama, and they'd forget about the comedy, and I'd want to get back into comedy. They go, no, oh, but you're doing like really. Sense. <laughs> it's been hard. Um, it's been hard to nail down who I am as 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 an artist. Um, and you know, Reacher has sort of really solidified this action space for myself. But again, when, when you know. This was one of the first scripts I read and fell in love with after Reacher came out season one. And 99% of the offers that I had were action movies. And I just felt like this was the right next step. And so um, I still believe um, in my soul this was uh, the best choice I could have made at the time. And uh, I was really happy um, that it, it all worked out. I think, I think it's, um, it's all maturing in the right kind of way. You know, I, I, I want to give you praise for that because like, I was going to ask that exact thing. What I have wrote down here is taking a role like this in direct response to your Reacher fame in yes. terms of showing both your newfound fans and potential employers, hey, look, I could do this too. I've wanted to do this kind of movie for years, and I, I, you know, I didn't have. Um... I didn't have the value to add to the project. You know, you're competing with like all the Chris's, you know, the Evans and the Pratt's and the P Pines. And, you know, I'm like, those, those, those are the people that I'm competing with to tell these kind of stories. And I, I was never going to win in, in, those, in those spaces, you know, until Reacher gave me the opportunity to do that. So I've wanted this for a long time. Um, it, I've been afforded the opportunity to do that through Reacher. But um, I, I think, uh, you know, to me, it's important to, to show range and to, to tell unexpected stories at times. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to say no to, to action for the, you know, our first choice out of the gate. And I'm, I'm really glad I did. This is a beautiful story I'm so proud to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had more. I, I would go into like how the message of this film reached a non-believer like myself, which I think is a very impressive thing for a film of this to do. Um, Hilary Swank is great in this. Did you learn anything from her or just working alongside her? Um, you know, I, yeah, working with Hilary Swank on this was a real gift. Um, I've worked with all different types of actors, especially, you know, especially being in TV, you know, um, you know, I, I might work with uh, a couple hundred different types of actors and all different skill levels, all different levels of preparation. Some come in and blow your, blow your mind, some disappoint. Um, and so I've seen it all. Um, but to work with somebody at her caliber was really interesting. 
Um, and I would say, the, you know, kind of the, the, the first thing that I noticed was that she, she had what, you know, what a lot of people at the very top have, but um, it's always interesting to see how it manifests, this fearlessness in her performance. It was fearless. Um, she would just inhabit this character and be as big, as ostentatious, as, as obnoxious or as sincere as required, and it was all... It was all just completely unafraid, and um, it was liberating watching that. You go like, oh yeah, like that is that is why she's so good at what she does. Um, it was cool to see firsthand. In in my research for this, I didn't know that she won twice. I knew that she had the one for baby. I didn't know she had one before that. I was like, Jesus Christ! She is she's, decorated she's to an intimidating accurate. degree. Yes. Yeah, uh, and just real quick, thinking about trying to get you in a comedy. Just have your team point out John Cena. Be like, look, he's right. doing it. <laughs> right. There you go. Uh, speaking of Reacher, other than the general quality of the show, what do you think it is about the show and your portrayal of the character that's hit home to such an extent? That's a really tough question to answer because it's got there's a lot of facets to that gem. But um, I think it starts with a great IP. Lee Child set this up in a way that um, hundreds of millions of people have read the books and fallen in love with them. Um, so a lot of the heavy lifting was done. Um, and then you got uh, Mr. Cruz, who um, brought Reacher to the feature film space and, and really introduced um, Reacher to the world in a big way. I think without him um, uh, paving the runway for us, I think very few people would be watching our show. So you have a lot of gratitude for what he did. Um, um, but then, you know, at the end of the day, Reacher's wish fulfillment for many of us, for guys and girls, he's... He's unburdened by many of the things that that weigh us down and and prevent us from um, from living out the adventures you know that await us in life. Um, and I, I think um, our you know most people seek justice, uh, desire justice to um, you know to a really rich degree, and few of us see it in our lifetime. And you know so that the we can escape into a character where you get instant gratification in that way, and that's a lot of fun. Reacher reminds me of a <clears throat> character from the Batman world, wink, wink, uh, but not <laughs> Batman himself. He reminds me of Joker in the sense that, like, Joker is the um, embodiment of pure, unbridled chaos. Reacher is the uh, embodiment, almost supernatural, of justice. Right. <laughs> they just appear at the right moment to either raise hell or save the day. Right. Yeah, I totally agree um, with that, yeah. The consensus out there seems to be that Persuader, which season three is based on, is the best Reacher book. Do you agree, and does that bring any added pressure? You know, it's so subjective. There are so many. I've read all the books. Um, there are there are some that I think that will will adapt to TV beautifully. There are some that I that that may not, but are still great books. So it's really hard to say. Um, some of my favorite books are like Die Trying is personally my favorite book. Um, um, I, I I hope and I, I believe we could be getting to that one soon, but. Um, uh, but Persuader is top five on almost every list when you talk about um, Reacher rankings, you know? So I know it's one of the crowd favorites. I'm really proud that we're doing it. Um, it is uh, one of the really pure adventures where it's just Reacher being Reacher, and, um, and he's, in a, he's in a really um, interesting quandary, you know, for most of the film. So I think it's, it's going to be a blast for people, and I'm glad we're doing it. You said film. Feature. TV show. I'm, okay. I have so I many movies. Say, I'm doing so many movies right now. I have. I'm sitting on 22 offers right now. I'll, all I'm doing in my free time is reading feature scripts right now. So I'm like, my head is in oh, a dude. different place. Congratulations! Yeah, That's thank incredible. You. Um, something a colleague of mine he brings it up all all, all the time, and myself is really, um, really likes about you is your openness about the way in which you you've used test. Is that a conversation with, that you had to have with your team about going public with it, or was that a solely you standing on your ground, be like, "This is I want to go forward with this"? Because the unspoken secret is, a lot of people in your line of work use it, but we really appreciated your sort of forthrightness about it. So I'm just curious, like, how you came to the decision to do that. Look, I, no, I didn't ask permission to talk about it. Um, it's something that is meaningful and effective in my life, and I don't want to keep it a secret. I, I genuinely believe that it can help a lot of men um, who, you know, need help with mood balance or, you know, restoring muscle loss or, um, you know, you know or, if, or have a lot of the symptoms that I had, which, which, you know, when you have no testosterone, 
um, you know, like have trouble breathing, you know, there's no hemoglobin um, transfer. You know, there's a lot of reasons why it's a, it's a good idea for a lot of people. And, um, you know, if I can be a voice in helping to destigmatize that as like a problem, I mean, this is a natural chemical your body makes. It's, um, it's wonderfully effective and it, it, you know, can add a lot of vitality to your life. Why would I want to keep that a secret? I want you to feel as, as, as your, I want you to feel your best. And if there's a way to help you reach that, then great. This is one way that, awesome. that I've learned. Um, uh, it's something that I need and benefit from. So I'm happy to share it. It's a great answer. Uh, Alan, I've got a couple of DC heroes to ask you about. One you have played and one you have not played. Which would you like first? Let's go with the one I've played, because I think I know who we're talking about for the other one, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is the part of the job that I have to do. Um, playing Aquaman in Smallville was your first ever acting role. When you look back on those photos of, of yourself, <laughs> what comes to mind first? And do you ever sort of imagine a butterfly effect career where that spinoff comes to be? Um, what comes to mind first is um, how fast and far I can run from all civilization. When I see myself in that orange head-to-toe Speedo zipped up the middle, um, <clears throat> I see those pictures and I like kind of can't believe that anybody thought it was a good idea to dress me like that <laughs> like, and photograph me with, with, uh, with that ensemble. But, uh, but when you're just starting out, you you do not feel like you have a voice or permission to say anything. So um, there was, I just, I never questioned a thing and I wish I had. Um, that speedo was scary. But um, uh, yeah, no, I, you know, the, I, 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 was, I, I was happy to, you know, I was happy to play Aquaman, happy to, 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 to kick the door open to Hollywood with that, um, that fun character, um, you know, to start my career. But I was also, there's just so many other things that I want to do, like, Talking about ordinary angels again. I mean, uh, getting to play a real life guy and tell this um, insane, harrowing true story um, about a community rallying together to save a little girl. I mean, this is the stuff. I mean, this is the meat and potatoes to me, and um, really highlights um, what a career can 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 be about. All right, <clears throat> let's do it. But I'm going to do it in a nuanced way, so you I can love, actually okay, try let's to see, let's see what you got. articulate some thoughts on it. How does it make you feel about your career and your work, that your name is being mentioned as a choice to play one of cinema's most iconic characters? I, the fact that people are interested in me playing Batman is, uh, is a real honor and privilege. I mean, I, it's one of the first characters I fell in love with as a child. I, I, you know, I, I, I still remember the, the big long shotgun coming out of Joker's pants yeah, as he goes to shoot down the, the bat plane, you know, in, um, in, in the early days of Batman for me. I mean, those iconic moments really resonated with me as a child. Um, to, to, for there even to be a conversation or a rumor mill surrounding this role um, for me is um, it's just, all, all, you know, all I can do is laugh. I mean, I just think it's, um, it's wild that that's, what, that's where we are. Um, and uh, who knows what, what they have planned for the franchise, you know, if they want to go much younger and tell these origin stories. Uh, you know, it sounds like that's kind of what the, what the plan is. He's got to be old enough to have a kid. Okay, then, you know, I've got a couple of those. So go. I'm, Sorry, you know, man. So I'm, I'm not going to let you sneak out like that. <laughs> I would, look, I would love to. I, I would absolutely love to. Um, it's uh, one of the coolest characters of all time. Hey, man, you put in the work. I think anybody who's followed your career can see that as clear as day. It is awesome to see it all come together the way that it has. And I will just say, if Daniel Craig could turn Bond blonde, then you, sir, can do the same for Bruce Wayne. Ordinary Angels, February 22nd. Thank you for your time today, Hey, sir. man, thank you so much.